I am Anil Kumar and in this video we will try to understand how to find domain and range of a rational function. So we have three different rational functions here. We need to find domain and range of these functions. Now finding domain is kind of simpler in a rational function since we are looking for restrictions that is the values of x which will make denominator 0. So let's write down domain first right and then we'll look into the range part. Now, for the first function, denominator cannot be minus 2. Since at minus 2, we have a vertical asymptote. Since minus 2 would make this function something over 0, right? So, the domain is x belongs to real numbers, but x is not equal to minus 2. So, this is the first one. For the second one, it is again x belongs to real numbers, but x is not equal to so what value will make x as the denominator 0? What value of x will make denominator 0? So you can equate to 0. So we'll write 3x plus 6 equals to 0 minus 6 divided by 3, which is minus 2, right? So that is how you do it. In this particular case, what happens? Let us do it. So we have, we'll equate x squared plus 1 equals to 0. So we get x squared equals to minus 1, but x squared can never be minus 1. Or we can write x equals to plus minus square root of minus 1. Well, that is not real. So there is no restriction here, right? So in this particular case, we say that the domain is x belongs to real number, correct? So domain part is kind of simpler. How to give range for these functions, right? Now, one of the critical things is to find the horizontal asymptotes. The horizontal asymptote is not in the range of the function. That is kind of very critical. So that could help us to find. But in a way, if I sketch these functions, then it may be even better for us. As you know, this is kind of a reciprocal function translated. So this is simpler to sketch also and also to write down the range for this particular function. So let's quickly kind of sketch these functions and then and then we will write down the range okay so let's do the best possible we can for the given situation so x plus 2 x is 0 at minus 2 so we have a vertical asymptote at minus 2 and uh, we know that we have a horizontal asymptote since if x is large something over large will be 0 so we have a horizontal asymptote which is which is our x-axis itself now which part is negative which is positive if I put x as 0, I get minus 3 over 2. That means I have intercept here, right? And we know these. This is my x-intercept. So what we can do is quickly sketch a graph of a reciprocal function kind of like this. So this is the graph with minimum possible. And you can test on which side whether it is correct or not. This is minus 2 for us by taking some value, right? If I take a value minus 3, do I get a positive or negative value? If I take minus 3 here, so minus 3 divided by minus 1, which is positive, so it works. Now, next one is 2x minus 3 divided by 3x plus 6. In this case, we know horizontal asymptote should be what? Horizontal asymptote is ratio of these two, right? 2 over 3. So 2 over 3 is less than 1 anyway. So I'll draw a horizontal asymptote like this. Let, let's say this is our horizontal asymptote. And if I write x equals to 0, that means the vertical asymptote will be vertical, I should say, will draw vertical asymptote. That means denominator is 0, which is at minus 2. So let me draw this minus 2 here, for example. So this is my vertical asymptote, which is x equals to minus 2 and that is y equals to 2 over 3, the horizontal asymptote. Now we will find x and y intercepts. If I put x as 0, I get the y intercept which is minus 3 over 6 or minus half. So minus half is kind of here. So that is my y intercept. How about the x intercept? For x intercept, the numerator should be 0. So in this case, numerator is 0 by 3 over 2 plus so 3 over 2 plus is the value which is more than 1 so let's say this point now so we found that the x and y intercepts are here and uh, so we can connect them and approximately graph our function so we can say the graph is kind of like this 
Secondly, what we know about reciprocal functions is, I should say rational functions, this graph is symmetric about this point. So, so we'll have kind of like this here. So always they are symmetric. It's good to know all this, right? Now the third one is reciprocal of x squared plus 1. Now let us say, let me first sketch x squared plus 1 and then we'll do reciprocal of it. x squared plus 1 will be a function which is kind of like this, right? So let us say this is 1. And if I am sketching a reciprocal of this function, then 1 reciprocal will be 1. And as the value increases, the y value will decrease, right? So we'll have a function which is kind of like this. Now, I hope now you appreciate why I have sketched it to write down the range. Now I think I can write down the range, right? So the range is y belongs to real numbers, but y is not equal to the horizontal value. So y is not equal to 0 in the first case. In the second case, y belongs to real numbers, but y is not equal to 2 over 3, correct? So that was easy. But here, this is kind of very typical. So y belongs to real number. But what is y here? Maximum value is 1, right? So y is actually... I should start with 0, right? It's good to write inequalities in one direction. So y is greater than 0, right? It is not crossing x-axis at all. And it is less than equal to 1. So that is tricky part. Because of that, I sketched all of them and showed you how to do it. But I hope with this video you also learn how to quickly sketch. So these graphs are 1 over x. These graphs are symmetric about this point of intersection. Okay, and these graphs will not have vertical asymptote. So that is a good information and with this I think you should do fairly well in this chapter of rational functions. Thank you and all the best.